Okay. 2019 is a year where I am trying to be more vulnerable, right? Which so far I completely hate. So I should probably start with the natural place, which is to tell you how I didn't buy a house. I'm one of those people who's very goal-oriented. I, I like to produce things. I like to make things. I like there to be a tangible result. I like to track how I'm doing. I'm really into Excel spreadsheets. I keep a really detailed budget. I'm kind of like that. So I decided that I wanted to buy a house, right? And I'd been saving for a couple years with this goal in mind, and I felt like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm finally here. I can finally do this. And I started doing it, and I was completely anxious every minute of every day. I couldn't figure out why I was so unhappy. I'd been doing it for about two weeks. I felt like I'd done everything right. I felt like I'd controlled every variable that I could, and I wasn't happy. And I had to sit there and think about okay, hey, this isn't working. <laughs> and I decided not to buy a house. And I had a good, long cry about it. Mm. A good, long cry. Yeah, this is my good buddy. I love you. It kind of got me thinking about my creative process. I had tweeted something earlier today about asking people what they thought were their best practices for doing marketing for their fanfic, right? And Chell commented something about having a regular posting schedule and just sticking to it even if your chapters are shorter or, you know, letting people know why you can't. And I thought about kind of my own process, and I'm one of those people who likes to post really, really long chapters. And it kind of occurred to me that what I was doing with those long, hard-fought chapters that I just kind of agonized over for a long time was sort of similar to what I'd been doing with this whole house process, right? So I wouldn't let anything out of my sweaty little hands until I felt like I had really gotten it exactly where I wanted to. And the result was just kind of me being really stressed out about it. It took some of the joy out of it. So I guess today I'm just kind of thinking about the relationship between my perfectionism and my anxiety, and but more so really about how both of those things for me are kind of about vulnerability more than anything else. You know, what is my responsibility to honor my own vulnerability? I've been thinking about how a lot of my decisions, artistic in general, are about avoiding anxiety, about avoiding fear, about avoiding confrontation. And just kind of trying to create a life that's invulnerable. And I'm really tired of doing that. So I want to get to a place in my artistic career and my professional career where I can just try things. Just do them. Do them badly. Fall forward. Fail. And I gotta tell you, it, it's really hard. I want to be one of those people who are authentic and open about their struggles because when I see people do that, it's so helpful to me because I can see that they're courageous, they're brave, they're sharing their vulnerability with the world. But when I'm vulnerable, I feel scared. I feel anxious, I feel nervous. It's so hard to let go. Oh, oh. And I'm trying to look at my own vulnerability as courage rather than as fear or risk. Ollie, I'm being vulnerable. I love you so much, Ollie. So I guess I'm saying I still don't have a house. But I do feel like I have a better understanding of myself. And I'm going to try and bring that into my creative life this year. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do some occasional video check-ins just to kind of share how I'm doing. Because I always like it when I see other people being vulnerable. And I thought maybe you might like to see me being vulnerable too. And uh, I wish you an awesome Saturday. And... Hell, go out and be scared today. Hey.